couple of things sort of jumped out at me today uh, from our readings. Uh, certainly our gospel, uh, you know, last week we had maybe the most famous story Jesus ever told. And, and maybe this is fairly close to second or third on that list in, in terms of stories from the gospels today, John's gospel, uh, that we know very well. And there's also always interesting conversation around this particular gospel. You know, some people will, will say, how come there's only one person being brought in front of Jesus? You know, they said they caught her in the act of adultery and it takes two to tango. So where's the other person? Another uh, train of thought that some people talk about is trying to figure out what Jesus is writing on the ground with his finger. Uh, some say that maybe he's writing the names of all the people or that are standing around him. We'll never know. Uh, and we probably don't really know why they only brought the woman, though we can assume it's because of the culture of that particular point in time. But, but you know, to me, the center of the story is really Jesus' ability to, to make people put down their stones, uh, to, to, to walk away and, and to let a person be forgiven. You know, I think one of my struggles with life today, particularly over the last three or four or five years, is that we're, we're so willing to pick up rocks. Uh, and, and a lot of times we're willing to throw them at people. We're so judgmental. And I'm not talking about conservative and liberal, uh, all, all aspects of life, left or right, conservative or literal, traditionalists or progressives, whatever. We're all very quick to pick up rocks, uh, to, to uh, judge people, uh, and, and to express that judgment, whether it's through gossip whether it's through our political system, our news system, or our, our internet, our many social media platforms. We're, we're at each other. And I think one of the graces of this gospel is that Jesus dis, dissipates all of that and allows this person to, to encounter forgiveness, to, to hopefully grow. Yes, Jesus at the end of the gospel says, go and don't sin anymore. But she's human, we're human. Uh, it, 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 it's probably going to continue on. Maybe not the same sin, but, but, but we're, we're not going to avoid sin altogether. And, and we have to have that willingness, that trust, that we can be forgiven and hopefully grow. You, you know, in that first reading, I, Isaiah has that beautiful uh, saying that, that God asks him to proclaim to the Israelites that God's going to make something new. And I think that's what Jesus was helping that woman to grow into. Uh, you know, St. Paul, that we listened to in, in our second reading, says he doesn't focus on what's behind him. He focuses on what's ahead. Uh, we have to let go sometimes. And we have to move into the gift of the present moment that takes us into hopefully a new, graced, loving future. So maybe for our journey in faith today, uh, during this time of Lent, as we approach the most holy of weeks, we, we might pause for a moment and maybe set down our rocks. Uh, let, let them go. Let, let Jesus look at us and say, neither do I condemn you.